Good morning, everybody. How's it going? Timeister here, and welcome back to Manor Lords. We're here in Goldoff, starting exactly where we left off in the last episode. We're now in July, right in the dead of summer, and this is a wonderful time to be in the game, as it's kind of a busy time, right? It's a time when you want to expand a lot, and if your city is agriculture-based, this is really an important time for getting your crops going. Thankfully for us, we have no crops, and uh, we're solely focusing on, you know, wild animals and berries to feed ourselves. You know, I have to say, out of all the starts that I've had in this game, this is probably one of the better ones. You know, I have healthy reserves of just about everything. My fuel and food reserves are really good and good standing, so uh, we're off to a great start. Now, the only thing that is holding me back at the moment is a low approval rating. But I think it's just a matter of time before this negative four homelessness goes away. I think this kind of refreshes once a month. Um, so that is going to disappear probably shortly. And um, with an approval rating of more than 50%, um, new families should begin to start moving into town. Now, also, all of my families are assigned to doing a job right now, which is preventing me from constructing anything. So I think what I'm going to want to do in order to start expanding the city is I'm gonna unassign a family from my logging camp. You know, I have a pretty good reserve of timber right now. I'm gonna still want to keep producing firewood because you never wanna run out of fuel. Um, but this is going to free up a family to start constructing. And I want to preemptively start building some more burgage plots because I think all of my homes are occupied right now. And, um, you know, in order for new people to move into town, we're going to want to uh, to build out some more. So I'm going to build a brand new little subdivision over here and uh, get some new homes. I think I'll make that a bit narrower. Just so I can squeeze in. Yeah, so I like for these expansion plots and these houses to be like really close together. Because when you start upgrading these to level 2 and 3 homes, it really makes them look like an actual wall-to-wall -wall kind of town. So I like to create really narrow burgage plots that are close together. Alright, so I have one family now that is going to focus on construction of these burgage plots. But on top of that, there's a couple of other things that I would like to get done this episode. One of which is a trade route. So right now I have 20 gold in my reserves and, you know, these burgage plots here, um, they're going to produce a little bit of gold each season as, you know, they produce their goods, but it's not really going to make that much of a difference. To really get a good economy going, you want to start trading. And luckily for me, I have a huge massive iron deposit right here out of town. There is no way I'm going to use all of this iron. So the next best thing to do with it is to sell it. So uh, if I go into my trade menu here, let's go to, uh, would this be under crafting materials perhaps? Yeah, so iron ore. And uh, I am going to purchase a trade route. So it's going to cost me 15 gold, but it is totally going to be worth it, guys. You'll see. And I'm going to set this to export my iron ore. Now, this trading post is going to remain dormant until I assign a population to it, assign a family to it, um, and I can't really afford to do that right now, so my focus is really going to be improving my approval rating to get more people to move in. Um, first, I'm going to have to house them, and uh, once we start getting new families to move in, then you know we can get our trade post functioning. Another thing I would really like to do this episode is to start upgrading my burgage plots. Now, I'm not able to do that at the moment because I don't have a church and I'm lacking um, clothing. So, two things. Um, people need clothing, right? They need to dress themselves and whatever. So, uh, you need to have a clothing stall somewhere in your marketplace. And in order to do that, you're going to need some type of industry. And I believe that is uh, a tannery. So a tannery is going to use hides to create leather, which they can then sell. And number two, by having more stalls in here selling various products, that is greatly going to improve our approval rating. 
Um, and the higher your approval rating is, the faster your town expands. And, you know, you can get into these rapid expansion uh, projects by really increasing your approval rating. So, number one thing to do is uh, we got to get these Burgage plots built. So, I'm going to accelerate the simulation and let's give this... Let's give these three buildings a high construction priority. Um, not that it's going to change anything because that's the only thing I have under construction right now. But what I'm going to have to move on to next is building a... Under mining... A mining pit. I'm going to have to build a mining pit over my iron deposit and I'm gonna keep this at a medium priority so they're gonna focus on the burgage plots first and it's gonna take a bit of time to get this constructed in the first place because I only have one family that is uh, dedicated to building so in the meantime I'm going to build a road that is going to weave its way through the forest and uh, connect to uh, this mine over here and you know what I may as well also build a stone cutters camp right beside my uh, what would this be a stone deposit because I'm gonna need stones for new buildings pretty soon I still have 10 in my uh, my storage how much do I need for a church 10 okay oh I totally forgot about planks, guys. We need to get some planks in here. That's the only thing that's preventing us from building our church, too. Uh, so let's go into... Would this be gathering? Yes. We're going to need to build a saw pit. So I'm going to uh, build this logging camp right beside the saw pit. And uh, there we go. So we're just going to wait until this gets built. So we just need to wait until this saw pit gets built. And, you know, I have a pretty... Oh, it's, it's dwindling down a little bit. But I still have a decent timber reserve. And that's always the challenge, guys. The challenge I find is always finding enough workers to, you know, get your, your town functioning. But I think it's only a matter of time before we get some new population moving in. You know, once these burgage plots are all complete. Because, of course, you have to have enough housing in order for your families to start moving in. And I think... I think all of these homes are occupied, so that's probably what's preventing new families from moving in at this point. Anyway. Now, what I'm going to want to do as well is uh, I'm going to want to build a tannery. Uh, where is it? Industry tannery. I'm going to build it right here. And as soon as we have some new people that are going to move in, I'm going to assign them to a tannery. And then we'll get some new market stalls here. So, uh, yeah, guys, that's the goal for this episode. I would really like to start getting level 2 buildings in town. And secondly, I would love to establish a trade route, which we've already kind of done. I just need to assign a family to operate the trading post. And then we'll really start to make bank, I think. I've never actually exported iron before. I don't even know. How much does it sell for? I didn't even check. Let's go check that out, guys. Uh, is it commodities? No, it was crafting materials, iron ore. It sells for three each. So if I can get a healthy reserve in iron ore, I'm pretty much set for life. <laughs> There's no way I'm going to use all of this iron. Oh, and it looks like we're picking almost all of our berries. We don't have many berries left, but that's okay. Uh, I think I have quite a healthy reserve of them. Yeah, 53, which is pretty good. All right, so we got our first burgage plot complete. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, okay, I can't afford to uh, assign a specialty to this building yet. So we'll just have to wait until we get our trade route established. All right, guys, look at this. A new family has moved in. So we now have two unassigned peoples. And I think I'm just going to keep it that way until all of our buildings are constructed. So I have my mining pit, which is under construction, and I also have a stone cutter's camp over here. So until these are built, I'm just going to keep two workers on uh, construction duty. So let's build a road that goes over to this camp. And I guess I'll just keep this road going and we'll connect it up to the main road there. 
Okay, so there is now no more berries, and there is going to be no berries left until the spring. So we're in September now. Uh, you can see through the rain slightly that the trees are starting to change color. And, uh, you know, things are, are, are going to start to slow down for the winter. So I'm going to unassign this family, and that's going to give us three population on construction duty now. So things are going to move ahead pretty quickly. Uh, but I think I think I might actually be okay with two construction crews. So I'm going to assign a family to my trading post. So we're going to finally start to get some income coming in. And then uh, we'll have two crews that are going to build things. So right now... Oh, okay, so my saw pit is also done. I kind of forgot about that. Uh, I'm going to have to assign a family to my saw pit as well. But I think... Okay, so my tannery, I'm going to assign a high priority. I want to get that built. And then I want to get my stone cutter built afterwards. But yeah, take a look at this, guys. I really love the seasons in this game. It's September, the leaves are slowly changing colors, and they're even going to change further once we get into October and November, and then winter hits. So, like, seasons are done. Oh, it's just awesome in this game. <laughs> The graphics are just so remarkable in this game. I love it. All right, so my tannery is complete. I'm going to want to assign a family to that rather quickly because I want to finally start upgrading some of these Burgage plots to level 2. And then we're going to get some more marketplace stalls plopping in here, which is really exciting. So I see some people walking back and forth along this road. That can only mean that they're on their way to build one of these two buildings. All right, look at that. We already have a market stall that has been constructed, a clothing stall. So uh, it's just a matter of time before all of these burgage plots get uh, whatever supply they need for clothing. And then we'll just be missing a church to be able to upgrade these to level two. All right, so my mining pit has been complete. I'm just waiting for more people to move in. That's all I need. <laughs> Do I have people in all of these? Oh, wow, I think I'm already running out of housing. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's continue expanding then. Let's get some more housing in here. I think I can probably fit one more Burgage plot in here. We'll make it kind of an odd shape. There, this guy will live on the street corner. There, let's expand over here. Oh, awesome. All right, so we just got a new family moving in. I'm going to assign them straight to the saw pit. We're going to need to start producing planks in order to get our church built. Okay, here's one thing, guys. So there's two different things that'll happen. So you'll have new families that will move into your town. These families can be assigned to do whatever, but then you'll also have new family members that are going to join existing families. And this doesn't necessarily mean you have more people to work with. It just means that the families that you have assigned to doing whatever are just going to be slightly more productive, right? Because then you have children that are helping out on the farm kind of thing. So you'll just get a, a bit of extra yield from those families. Oh, no. Oh, we just got some firewood stolen by bandits. Where is there an encampment? Oh. All right. Well, it's like we got some bandits as neighbors, guys. So this is a thing you can expect in this game. Your goods are going to be stolen at some point from bandits. It's usually not that much of a concern as long as you're uh, healthy, uh, healthily stocked up in whatever. Um, but yeah, it just looks like they stole a couple of firewood. You know what? We'll let them have it. We have, like, way more than we're ever going to need. Look at this. I've never actually been, like, this far ahead as far as, uh, you know, food reserves and fuel reserves. It's pretty crazy. Honestly, you know what? I have so much fuel and so much food. I could unassign my families from food producing and assign them to like you know different things such as my mining pits but i don't know i'm gonna play it on the safe side and uh i'm just gonna leave them where they are 
Looks like our wild animals are repopulating. So I think once that hits 20 out of 20, I'm going to assign somebody to a, a logging camp. But for now, we're all right. You know, at least we're good to get through the winter. That's the main thing. Ooh, winter is approaching, guys. So we're in October. And as you can see, the trees are mostly red and orange. And the temperature is dropping, even if there's no actual temperature value. But, you know, you can just see by the tone of the lands. It's getting a little chilly out there. So right now what I'm waiting on is for these burgage plots to complete. Because um, my one single ox is 100% occupied. And it's preventing my saw pit from functioning. So even though I've built this saw pit a while ago and I've assigned a family to it, I'm still at zero planks. Um, and uh, until my ox is freed up, then uh, then we can't really use it. Um, so this is why once your city gets to a certain size, you're going to want to go to your hitching post and purchase another ox. So that means that you can construct things while you're transporting goods, you know, doing all that stuff. So all right, and there we go. So our ox has been freed up finally, and now we're just going to start producing planks here at a, a pretty rapid rate, I would say, because of the proximity from our logging camp. Um, but, oh, geez, I just ran out of timber. Okay, well, <laughs> we're going to assign a family to the logging camp, and uh, then we can start producing planks at a uh, decent rate. Uh, but what am I missing now? Yeah, I'm missing timber and planks at this point so i just need 20 planks it's not that bad but at least now we have a ton of empty burgage plots that can be occupied and you know we're at a pretty uh, healthy approval rating i would say and uh you know people should start to move in here hopefully soon another thing too guys i may as well talk about is armies I'm not going to focus on that at all this episode, but we're eventually going to want to build up an army if we, one, want to occupy a neighboring zone, which we're going to want to do pretty soon to tap into these resources, and also to protect ourselves against bandits, which are going to uh, become more and more rampant as we move along. Now, as far as resources go, this plot of land here, I think, is where I'm going to go, unless something changes, because... We got some more wild animals, we got a nice heavy uh, berry deposit here again, and we have a huge stone deposit. And also, all of these deposits of materials are relatively close to our starting village here, so I think it makes logical sense to uh, claim this territory. But I mean, that's still quite a ways away, and we won't focus on that for now. I'm just kind of realizing now, guys... Um, I have a family here assigned to this trading post, which is not doing anything because I have no iron ore at all in my storage. So I'm going to unassign him from the trading post and assign them to the mining pit to actually produce iron. Um, <laughs> I can't believe I overlooked that, but it's fine. So uh, there, we're going to get a uh, trading route established here pretty soon once we have enough iron. Now I finally have 35 planks in the bank, so I'm good to go. I'm going to unassign this family. I'm going to assign two families to my logging camp just to accelerate things because I think my woodcutter's lodge is, you know, producing fuel at the same rate that I'm producing logs. So uh, I'm going to double my log production and then we should be able to build our very first church in town. Because at this point, that's the only thing that's missing from upgrading all of these burgage plots to level 2. So all this to say, guys, you know, you can take your time and grind your way through this game. It's very enjoyable, I find, to grind your way through it. Or if you want, you can really min-max your way through the, the entire construction of your village, which speeds things up a lot, but it requires a lot more management. Okay, guys, so we finally have all the construction materials required to build our church. And I'm going to go ahead and plop it, I think, here. And the reason is, this is kind of the highest point in the village right now. It's kind of overlooking this hill. It's not really the highest point because this hill keeps going up. But nonetheless, I mean, it's kind of central to the whole village. What my plan is, is to fill in this entire block here with 
everything industry related, uh, storage, whatever the case is, and all around it will be housing. So I'm going to build a road that goes around the church, just like this. That'll give it a, a bit better accessibility. And there we go. Our church is uh, under construction now. And I think it should go relatively quick due to the proximity from our logging camps. And uh, it, apart from stone, I guess. But stone... Our stone is... Yeah, it's stored here in our storehouse. So it's still not a very long walk. So uh, I'm going to accelerate the simulation here as our church gets built. And then we'll wrap things up after we get our upgraded burgage plots. Oh no! Oh, I lost my favorite tree. That was my favorite tree. I was hoping it was going to survive. I guess not. <laughs> it's because I set my operational ring, my, my work area, too much. It encompasses, like, the whole village. Oh, look at that. My storage is now full, so I'm probably going to want to uh, upgrade this. And look at that, guys. We're heading into December now, so we're finally in the dead of winter. Now, I'm not going to focus too much on what goes on in winter this episode, but next episode we'll focus on surviving our very first winter. It's not that extreme. There's not really anything that you have to be too concerned about, apart from fuel and food, maybe, which we have a ton of at the moment, so we're good on that. All right, so you know what? I have plenty of families that are working now. Um, I think I'm going to half my logging camp production again. And I'm finally going to assign a family to my stone cutters camp as well. So now every building, I think, or almost every building in the town is operational. Uh, so we're finally going to get our trade route going. And uh, we're going to get some more money here in town pretty soon. All right, there we go, everybody. Our very first church is complete in town. It looks wonderful here in the center of the whole village. And now we're finally ready to upgrade. Oh, why can we not upgrade? Requirements not met. Oh, okay, so we need some more food supplies, it looks like. Okay, did we lose? What am I missing for food? Oh, I have no meat. Okay, that's why. Okay, well, we got to get some more meat here in order for us to be able to upgrade to a level 2 burgage plot. So, I think right now there's nothing under construction. So, I'm just going to assign a family to my hunting camp. And they're going to start to collect food. And then we should finally be able to upgrade to our level 2 burgage plots. Oh, nice. We just got a new family that moved in. Unfortunately, our storage is full at the moment, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a second storehouse, or can it be upgraded? It can be upgraded, so I may as well do that, because that is going to increase our storage 2,500. Wow, that is totally well worth it. And you know what? Because we have that new family that just moved in, they are going to be the ones responsible for constructing this new storehouse. That is wonderful. Alright, so we're in January now, guys. Right in the dead of winter. And really, I think we're... <laughs> we're not going to have any issues surviving our first winter. Oh, look at that. Our first trade has just come in. Sweet! Look at that, guys. So we now have 65 gold in our reserves. That is awesome because that means I can finally start to uh, construct a backyard extension to my new burgage plot. So uh, we can either do vegetables, chicken coop, or goats for now. I think I'm going to go straight for the goats, you know. I'm going to do two goats and can I afford... Oh no, I'm just at 15, but I can afford some carrots. I'm going to do some carrots over here. 
So these goat pastures are going to provide us a uh, passive yield of hides. And with the hides, we can transform them into various things. But I think we need a specific industry to be able to do that. Okay, so no, it is the tannery. Okay. So that just means that we're going to have even more clothing supplies here in our market. And how are we doing for wild animals? We seem to be hunting some. Okay, we still don't have any in our burgage plots yet. But it takes some time for everything to get done in this game, guys. Because we need to physically transport our hunted animals over to uh, wherever they need to go. And then they need to make their way into the marketplace. And uh-oh! A bandit camp was sighted. Oh, geez, where is this? Oh, okay, so it's another one, but it's way across the map, so... I don't know if we have to worry about that just yet. Well, perhaps it was but uh, we'll just keep things status quo for now. Okay, we're finally good to go. Let's upgrade some burgage plots. So I'm going to upgrade... Oh, requirements are not met for these guys. I didn't even assign a, a specialty to this one. Oops. Oh well, let's upgrade it anyways. There we go. So the advantage of upgrading your houses is basically whatever yield you're getting from, uh, you know, your, your carrot farms or your hides or whatever it is, um, you'll just make a bit of extra money off of them. So there's definitely an economic benefit to upgrading your burgage plots. Visually too, um, things start to look a little better too, you know, nicer houses and... You know, if you if you play the game aesthetically in any way, then uh, the level 2 and level 3 houses definitely look a little cooler. Built with better materials. And look at this. Our brand new large storehouse is on the verge of completion. I think we're just waiting for... Okay, one more timber. Why do I have 15 out of 10 planks in this area? I think it may have been using some of the planks that were stored in there. Not sure. And there we go. So the ox is finally delivering that last piece of timber. There we go. And now we just have to wait until the construction crew arrives to complete the build. Oh, there we go. Boom! Large storehouse is complete. And holy crap, is it ever worth it? Because look at that, we now have 2,500 of, uh, of storage space. What about here in our granary? Eh, we're alright. I don't think we need to upgrade just yet. Alright, cool. We just got a new family that moved in. We just got a new trade that came in. We now have 33 gold. May as well spend it on... Uh, these new burgage plots over here. I think I got these three upgraded. Let's have some chickens in this particular one. Now, chickens are really cool, I find, because they give you a passive yield of eggs, which counts as an additional food type. So it can increase your um, approval rating. Sweet! We finally have our very first level two burgage plot. That is wonderful. Just look at that. So you can see the difference between the level one. So they have a thatch roof and they're just kind of made of like, you know, not great materials. And our level two burgage plot is completely made out of wood and they look slightly different. Now, the difference isn't as big as uh, between level two and level three. So you'll be able to see what that looks like in a little bit. So guys, I think I'm going to wrap things up right about now. We're in our very first winter. We seem to be faring quite well. Uh, food supplies are still healthy. Fuel supplies are way overkill. Um, so I have no concerns here unless bandits come in and steal everything. But I don't think that's going to happen. So uh, I thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this episode and you are enjoying the series in general. Don't forget to leave a like. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And certainly don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And until the next episode, take care, everyone.